Do you remember how the banks got away with murder in 2008 and socialised their losses? Since then, they have done nothing but privatised their gains. The whole traditional financial system stinks, and that's part of the reason why DeFi is exploding right now. But here's the million dollar question. Is there a decentralised way to replace banks? Well, I've got some good news. There is a project focusing on just that, and it's called Monolith. I'm Guy, and in this video, I'll tell you everything you need to know about this project. I'll be looking at Monolith's non-custodial wallet, their hot crypto card, and I'll explain why it could be the crypto bank replacement you've been looking for. I'll also dive into the tokenomics of TKN and share my thoughts on its current market cap. So, buckle up and strap in for this vid. Before I get going, there are a few things I need to say. Firstly, you and I need to have a heart to heart. Sadly, I must admit that I'm not a financial advisor. I know, shocking. This, of course, means that I am not qualified to give financial advice. So, this video is purely for educational purposes only. Now, with that out of the way, I want to take a moment to welcome anyone new to the channel. Well done for finding the Bureau. When I'm not dodging pandemics, I spend my time creating tip-top guides and comprehensive coin reviews, just like this one. So, if that's something that you can get value from, then don't leave me hanging. Smash that subscribe button and be sure to turn on all those notifications. Do that and you'll never miss out on my nuggets of crypto wisdom. One last thing. I know many of you are busy and I just wanted to draw your attention to the timestamps that I've provided below. You can use them to skip to different parts of my analysis if you're strapped for time. OK, all set? Let's mosey on into Monolith. So, what on earth is Monolith? Well, I like to think of it as a decentralised banking replacement platform built on Ethereum. In short, the Monolith ecosystem comprises a mobile app which allows you to store, send, swap and buy crypto, while allowing you to spend your crypto through linking it to a fancy crypto card. Yes, those are the tools that you could probably replace your regular bank account with, and even better, it's also decentralised. The thing to know is that the Monolith wallet is very different from traditional banks, Coinbase or Revolut. This is because Monolith Wallet is entirely non-custodial. It allows you to remain in complete control of the funds stored there, all the while enabling you to spend that crypto in the real world. Now that real world spending is done via the Monolith Crypto Visa card, which allows you to spend ETH and ERC20 tokens anywhere Visa is accepted. The last time I checked, that was a heck of a lot of places. In short, Monolith is basically an all-in-one solution to help you escape traditional finance. Now, I know that may sound dramatic, but here's the deal. Your bank could freeze your account if they wanted to, and that means you do not have full control of your money. Seeing that Monolith Wallet is non-custodial, the project is simply unable to touch your funds at all, or dictate what assets you hold. Now, I know that most people don't really think about asset allocation when they put their money into a bank account. But what really happens when you put money into a bank is that they invest that cash to make a profit. Essentially, what happens when banks invest well is that they laugh all the way to the, well, to the bank. If things go wrong though, like in 2008, it's all right. The government will use your tax dollars to bail them out. Heads they win, tails you lose. The infuriating thing is that since the financial crash, nothing has fundamentally changed when it comes to how banks treat customer deposits. However, a solution like Monolith offers you the choice to invest your savings exactly how you want. You might want to go for a gold-backed ERC20 token and get exposure to that asset, or you might want to allocate a certain percentage of your savings to greening the energy grid and gain exposure to energy web token, for example. Oh yes, 
For those that love the idea of crypto helping to solve climate change, then be sure to watch my Energy Web review right here. Now, back to Monolith. What a project is essentially doing is giving us all the opportunity to reverse the trend we see in the traditional financial system and instead give us control over our own money. So yeah, if you want to embrace the decentralized lifestyle by going full crypto and saying no to that rubbish traditional financial system, then Monolith can help you do just that. So with all that said, let's move on and look at the tech, shall we? Basically, when you download the Monolith Wallet app and sign up, you are setting up a smart contract wallet and getting a private key for it. The cool thing about these contract wallets is that you basically own a piece of blockchain real estate on the Ethereum blockchain. That private key allows you to control that smart contract and you store your ETH and ERC20 tokens inside of that. The awesome thing about these contract wallets is that you can set them up with custom security features that can be programmed in with a few taps of your smartphone. So for example, I might hold 100 ETH in my Monolith wallet. The app gives me the option to set a daily withdrawal limit in ETH and I might set that to 1 Ethereum. Another neat feature is that you can also whitelist several crypto addresses and withdraw any amount to them. What all that means is that if someone got hold of your seed words, they could only withdraw one ETH a day. Yes, technically they could withdraw the whole wallet balance to one of those whitelisted crypto addresses, but I assume that you'll be in control of all of those, so that won't do the thief much good. Essentially, these protections prevent people like me and you from falling foul of catastrophic losses that you might have had with any other wallet. I mean, for most other wallets, if someone gets hold of your seed words, then you can be pretty sure that your entire balance is going to vanish faster than a sunny day in London. So if you're wondering why Monolith is built on Ethereum, well, they need smart contracts to make these contract wallets work. And given that Ethereum is the number one smart contract platform, I guess that initial choice makes complete sense, particularly when you consider Ethereum's network effects. However, I should point out that there is a risk that Ethereum cannot scale and that Monolith has essentially made a bet on Ethereum being the ultimate smart contract platform. So with that tech overview out of the way, I now want to move on and get into the nuts and bolts of the Monolith ecosystem. So shall we? So there are two main components of the Monolith ecosystem. The first is that Monolith app. This is where you get that decentralized contract wallet. That means it's completely non-custodial and decentralized. Here you can do all those regular crypto wallet things like store, send and receive ETH and ERC20 tokens. Yes, you can also set those daily withdrawal limits to protect yourself against those crypto thieves. On top of that, you can link the app to a monolith crypto card, preload it and access transparent exchange rates and even freeze your card if you lose it. Another cool feature of this app is that it has a DEX aggregator. So here you can swap tokens using your favorite DEX within the app. So if you love the likes of Uniswap, Bancor and Kyber, for instance, then chances are you're going to like this. Even better, those swaps on Monolith are entirely free. The final major app feature was announced by the folks at Monolith recently. Basically, they had closed the DeFi loop by implementing a fiat to crypto on-ramp solution. So you can buy DAI through the app with any bank card and Monolith is even paying for those gas fees to get those tokens delivered to your wallet. So with any on-ramp, the devil is always in the detail and Monolith is no exception. Here's what you need to know. Buying with fiat is only available to those that have completed KYC or those that have already ordered a monolith card. There are daily, weekly, monthly and yearly limits which you can see right here. All crypto purchases are limited to Visa cards only. And finally, the minimum DAI purchase is £250 or Euros. Yes, it would have been nice to see the option to buy crypto with fiat extended to more cryptocurrencies. However, 
that is apparently coming in the not too distant future. The second component of the monolith ecosystem is that hot crypto card. This links to that non-custodial wallet, which makes it stand out from all of the centralized crypto cards out there. Right now, the card is available in the 31 countries listed here. So that's most places in Europe. The cool thing is that the monolith card itself is completely free. Also, card purchases in your native currency are free. Local ATM withdrawals are free up to twice a month and thereafter 75 pence per withdrawal. To be honest, if you're using a monolith card in your home country, then it's more than likely you won't pay any fees at all. Because the monolith card is a prepaid one, you'll have to top it up by converting your crypto to fiat before using it. This is where you'll pay those fees. The first is a card top up fee, which will set you back 1% unless you use stablecoins. The second is a community contribution fee of 1%. I'll touch on that more a little later. So what that means is that if you top up your monolith card using the vast majority of supported crypto assets, then you'll be paying 2% in fees to do so. Now that being said, a top tip is just to cut those fees in half by topping up using a stablecoin like DAI. So with the monolith card, there are no upfront costs at all, and that makes it the perfect option for those that want a backup crypto card or those that are fine with those top up and community fees. The downside is that there are no card rewards whatsoever. So if card perks are what you're after, then you'll want to look at cards by the likes of Crypto.com. Now, with their Ruby card, for example, if you stake 1000 CRO, which is about $170 at the time of shooting this video, you can get benefits like 2% crypto cash back on all purchases, a Spotify rebate worth $156 a year, $50 in CRO free if you sign up via my link. So let's say that you spend $10,000 a year on a Crypto.com card. That would mean you get $156 in Spotify value, $50 free, $200 in cashback. So that's a total of $406 in perks a year, and you can get those staked CRO tokens back later on too. Now there's one important thing to note here, and that is unlike Monolith, the Crypto.com card is a centralized solution. So that's something you may want to consider. If you're still interested in getting access to those perks, then you can pick up your Crypto.com Ruby card with a link that I have for you in the description. With that link, you'll also get that free $50 in CRO. So now that you know all about the Monolith ecosystem, let's move on and take a look at the TKN token. In a nutshell, the way to look at the TKN token is that it gives you an opportunity to share in the future success of Monolith. Do you remember that 1% top-up fee that I mentioned earlier, which goes to the community? Well, that contribution is sent to a smart contract on the Ethereum network that's known as the community chest. Basically, TKN holders have a pro rata claim on the assets within the community chest. That means that if there is $100,000 in the chest and you hold 10% of the TKN tokens, then you can redeem those tokens for $10,000 from that community smart contract. That redemption process is known as cash and burn. If you select that option, what's important to note is that you can only take your share of the community chest once and your TKN tokens will be destroyed forever afterwards. You'll also surrender your claim on future monolith card fees that you might have got otherwise. So the offshoot of all that is that those that hold the token get a larger proportion of the community chest as more people cash and burn their TKN. In a way, it's a bit like a game of chicken. What all this means is that the TKN token is literally backed by a basket of Ethereum-based tokens. That means that some people might view holding TKN as a type of Ethereum index fund. TKN does have a current total supply of around 39.5 million and a circulating supply of 32.5 million. That means demand and supply economics should come into play here. In addition, the cash and burn mechanism means that as more people claim their share of the community chest, 
that the supply will shrink and make the token more scarce. Now, with what I've said so far, you're probably thinking that TKN sounds amazing. Here are the problems I have with it though. Now consider that at the time of shooting this video, TKN has a market cap of $13 million. One simple way of assessing if this market cap is a fair valuation is by looking at the value of the crypto contained within Monolith's community chest. After all, the token is essentially backed by that basket of Ethereum-based assets generated from card fees. I actually checked out the value of that smart contract on Etherscan and there is just over $50,000 in value in there. So let's pretend I owned all the TKN tokens and decided to cash and burn them. I'd be converting $13 million into about $50,000 in crypto. I don't think you need to be a rocket scientist to know that that is a terrible deal. Another thing to know is that Monolith used to be known as Token Card before its rebrand. That ICO funding was raised off the back of a white paper in 2017 that outlined several two-year projections. The good scenario stated over $13 million in licensing fees in two years. The better scenario posted a figure of $18 million in fees. And finally, the great scenario boasted $27 million in fees. A few years on, and there are only around $50,000 in fees in the community smart contract. So, it seems clear to me that there is a major mismatch when it comes to the type of success projected and what has actually happened in reality. Now, I thought to myself, maybe I'm missing something here, and that the increasing popularity of Monolith could supercharge the value of that community chest in the future and potentially justify that $13 million market cap. So I then took a dive into Etherscan again to see how many TKN holders there were. Honestly, I was shocked to find that there were only 327. Yes, it's true there might be hundreds or thousands of hodlers represented by a couple of exchange wallets. However, I was genuinely expecting the figure to be significantly higher. After doing some more digging, I found out that the number of Monolith contract wallets stood at just over 9,000, and the balance in Monolith smart contracts stood at less than $300,000. So, you can only conclude from those sorts of stats that it's going to be pretty damn difficult for Monolith's community chest to live up to that $13 million market cap anytime soon. I then found some numbers about the total amount of value topped up on Monolith cards. It's less than $1 million, folks. Now, I don't want to bash Monolith here. It's not their fault that the market cap is what it is. But with these sorts of stats coming out, can you say that TKN is fairly valued at a $13 million market cap? I for one sure struggle to see that. If I'm being honest, with such a difference in the value of the community chest and the TKN market cap, you would have to be insane to cash and burn. So I don't see that burning mechanism reducing the supply anytime soon. All right, folks, it's time for me to start wrapping up this video. Now, honestly, I love Monolith's non-custodial wallet, and I think it's super cool linking this with a crypto card. Being able to spend as effortlessly as you do with your fiat card, but having full control of your funds. I also like Monolith's idea of a community chest and the cash and burn mechanism. However, that only really becomes valuable if you acquire a significant number of users and card top-ups. That community top-up fee really matters, seeing that the community chest is what essentially backs the value of the token. $13 million in market cap for around $50,000 in crypto just seems like a terrible deal to me. Also, I can't see that community chest value significantly rising anytime soon. We are literally talking about hundreds of TKN holders, 9,000 monolith wallets, and total card top-ups of under $1 million. So I'm personally going to say yes please to the monolith app and card, and no thank you to the TKN token. Now with all that being said, maybe monolith will up their marketing game in the future. The product seems ready, they just need the users. And that is it for today team, my overview of monolith. I've spoken for long enough, and now it's time to hear your thoughts. So, do you agree with my assessment on TKN? Or 
Are you going to get a monolith card? Use those comments. Oh yes, I should also tell you that I am putting up $2,500 out of my own pocket this month to run an exclusive trading competition just for you lovely people. In addition, I've also been able to secure you an exclusive $120 bonus and a 15% trading fee discount. So, if you are a crypto trader, be sure to check that out in the description below. And finally, if you got value from this video, then please do this gent a favor and pump up those likes. If you want to see more videos from me, then be sure to subscribe. Thank you for being a loyal member of my community. I want to give back to you lovely people to show my gratitude. Every week I share an email of my personal insights into the crypto market. This covers everything from hot coin picks to market analysis. And it's where I also share the breakdown of my personal portfolio. So, do you want to join me? Smash it! Just head on over to the description and you will find a link to my sign up form. Then you just insert your email and hit submit. You will just need to confirm your email and hey presto, you are a member. I'm working on my next mailer as we speak.